really? <clears throat> Connecting, ladies and gentlemen, 4.02 p.m., Canoga Park, California, and we are live with Aaron Baker. What's yes, happening, boys? Good day, everybody. We well, are... Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go for it. <laughs> we have Aaron Baker with us in studio. That's awesome. Yeah, who is Aaron Baker? We'll get into that in a few minutes, We right? will, we will. Before Kinda we interesting, too, how we met him. Definitely we'll have to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, have you guys, did you guys watch the last drop this last Wednesday? Continuing series, Milwaukee to Maine. It's episode three. You got to check it out. I mean, we had people say to us, you got to get to the East Coast. Right. And by the time we got through this trip, I think we did the East Coast. Yeah, we, we... We got to the furthest point north, which will be the, in the latest or the last video, which is Lubbock, Maine, or some people call it Lubeck. Went out to the uh, light tower out there, and we could see Nova Scotia. And that's going to be cool. in the next episode or the next uh, probably the one two after out. that. Yeah, yeah so I think two out. There's like six episodes in this series, so go back and watch one, two, and three. Catch up on it. I mean, it's really... Awesome riding. Uh, we're not on our bikes, but we're on cool bikes, but cool scenery, fun stuff. You meet a lot of great people. And that's one thing we dig. You know, our, our main thing that we say is we shake hands with America. Nice. And we meet a lot of great people. Everywhere we go, we meet great people. And, and that's part of the, with meeting Aaron here. Yeah, we met sure. him at another Event. thing that we were doing that we had no idea we were going to meet him. <laughs> and then it turned out where, hey, now he's in our studio. Jen made an introduction. Yes. And then her father was here two weeks ago. Well, Jen actually so said. That was pretty cool. You have to meet Aaron. Right. You know. So. One degree, no, one degree of separation from all our connections, right? Right. 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 So right. awesome. And it's interesting when we went up and met Aaron and we gave him our cards, we were exchanging information. He said that he knew my you. son, me and my son. Yeah. From a place that he used to train. So that was really kind of interesting. That, I mean, talk about a small world. Right? right? <laughs> and back to the video a little bit. We've had a lot of comments from, from you all that are on the East Coast saying, we wish we would have known and we were going through the town. But helpful hint, um, we're always on the Instagram, Instagram Live when we're traveling in the town. So pay attention to those. I know this is YouTube, but... If you don't have Instagram, maybe it's worth looking at that because we will circle back. And we actually met a couple different viewers while we were there. Uh, we actually rode to a viewer who was out on a construction site. He was only about a mile away. But right. we said, hey, let's just go check it out. So if you watch that Instagram, either if it's at Xerox 57, Two Lane J, Big Lance C, you'll know what we're doing. But again, we're always traveling. We're hitting the Instagram when we're out, so you'll be able to see... And then we had a lot of picture people asking about the pictures and how dated they are. So, what's your what's your basil there? <laughs> um, but we were on this trip at the end of September, and and it takes us a few weeks to get back and and get them edited because Lance and I do a lot of the editing. Uh, Josh doesn't do. <laughs> I'm just a prop. Yep. So it's amazing. Just go check those videos out. But we're sitting with Aaron Baker, and he's got really an incredible story in it. I mean it. It captured the three of us. We're blown away. We've been talking to him, watching his, his uh, documentary, seeing all the stuff that he does, and it's so inspirational and mind-blowing. And maybe before we start having a discussion, do you have that little clip that you could play? Yeah, I mean... Uh, and then we'll play that a few times throughout the... Yeah, so it's about two minutes, but we'll, uh, we'll play this little clip here, and that'll kind of cover the screen, so you guys check that out, and then we'll... Uh, because you got to see this guy. It's just kind of the first intro. Of One oh, of my cool. earliest memories is on my so little PV. Uh, you guys I mean, comment like, if you can hear audio of this. I'd and twist I the throttle, it. but I'd look back, and I'd watch my rear tire just spin out. I mean, it was just So basically, we liberation. could just shut up right now. Yeah, we could if you wanted to. <laughs> Aaron grew up thinking he was the man of the house. I think he was about three years old when Autumn used to go to motorcycle. Dad, Dad do a most of this fight. around yourself. We learned together. This is a beat. Oh, this is a star. In other words, land out, gas, and he Five goes. Days of I thought I was in control. Invincible almost. <laughs> it's kind of fun. We've been kind of just liking chalking up. I picked up his hand and it was just like no life. Where have you been? 
In that situation, the probability of any recovery of function is, the short is almost zero. Or the uh, this was a neurosurgeon that gave me a one in a million chance of feeding myself again. So come on in. The question is, can we sometimes be wrong? I remember he told me he's like, this will not be my fate. Like I will beat this. Oh. <laughs> when we were discharged from the hospital, we no, literally had nowhere to go. They're I was asking, right now, so. where can we go? They said, look, there anything? are no other places for you to go. You want a beer? Although I'd been at this for a year, I was really starting to build some momentum no. with recovery. When I first met Aaron, I could oh, blow on sure. him and he'd fall back. Do you want a beer? Here. No, here. No, just here. Body. When someone I'm says they're relearning how I mean, to walk, think in terms of lapses. how an infant starts to walk. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? The only way out of this place is on. You my own wanted feet. to get on the show. Every <laughs> single step I took across that desert was every <laughs> single <laughs> flicker of movement Thank that you, I had built on. But this is really cool. For a long period of time. How's the trailer? Ah! Challenge to him as part of the trailer's doing life. it's almost I done here. People can still hear still hear he us chatting in the background. Most alive when he's on the brink of death. Aaron walking twenty I, I plus miles would have to equate to your average managed. person it's climbing awesome. Mount Everest. Coming <laughs> pipes. Wait up, Sarge! We have your dad's book Lieutenant in his Baker's glasses. coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought I'd come the battle yeah. would be over by the time I reach the scene. Do you want a beer or anything? Yeah. No, I'm okay. Not. Hey up, fellas. I was talking to Mike. I'm coming. He might swing by. Yeah, he's going to try. He's going to try. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. He's, he's really awesome. My mom will be riding again. She broke her leg. Oh, did she? A couple months ago. She was on her way to Arrowhead riding. All right. She stopped off and... Oh, no, you're good. Go for it. I was just saying we're back live. And stopped going into a fuel station and it was just too steep. And the bike just oh, it's crept on her. No way. Fell over on her and broke her leg. That's not good. So, no. so let's get can into this. Can you see, this. Jen? Well, I can see a nice helmet and some knees. Oh, so. And there she is. <laughs> so we got Jen in the house as well. I don't know if you guys remember Jen, but uh, two. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago or maybe three. Had her father in and. Playing guitar, Just harmonica. Going for it. That was a great show as well. I think that one went like two hours. Yeah, what a great time that was. Yeah, we was. got to talking on that one, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. That's always good. So, so Jen introduced us to Aaron. And let's get into Aaron's story a little bit. Uh, you're such an inspiration. We've been putting some stuff out on Instagram to show people kind of your story and um, tell us a little bit about who you are, and then we'll kind of get into the story. We should also make sure we pitch your website and your Instagrams, just Thank so you. we're doing all that right stuff. Well, first off, it's just an honor and privilege to be here, guys. Thank you for making the introduction. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a motorcyclist through and through. So um, got my first motorcycle when I was three years old. Right. Wow. So I've had, awesome. the, I've had the bug ever since. Learned to ride that before a bicycle. So. Twisting, so, the, twisting the throttle is just in the blood. Right? Yeah. And, and think about it. Jen's brought us two yeah. very inspirational motorcycle riders. <laughs> <laughs> well, your dad can definitely play. Yeah, wasn't that fun? Yeah, I watched that one. That was good. Well, we were stoked that he, because, you know, he was maybe not going to actually do some of the singing. You know, we were just going to play, but when he got in and started doing a little of the strumming and and then broke into the harmonica and him singing like he, it was he couldn't just help it. no he it was wasn't great gonna, you know <laughs> and Aaron, do you know that my dad he was in a bad crash and he has his whole neck rebuilt it's all fused yeah it's re that's the hangman break mm, yeah. that's so scary. for him to watch you on here now is such an inspiration for him i mean I, before he came on the show i was telling him about you and he was just enthralled by it. Wow. Well, that's what really we're doing inspiring. here, right? We're right. just exactly. motivating each other, inspiring each other, Absolutely. sharing our stories. Inspiration all around. So, you know, to just give background on the story, I suppose, is I started young riding the motorcycle. I followed the passion, which was to race and, to and become a champion. And as an amateur, I, I was pretty successful. Um, but then I had an accident and I went over the handlebars and I broke my neck. Where was that? It was actually in Simi Valley, the old Honda test track oh, back was. off of, uh, shoot, right by New LA Ave. It's okay. all developed now back there. Uh -huh. But back in the 80s, that was where Bailey and Omara and all those guys would train. So anyways, the, that's where the track was. And I was riding for a Suzuki team 
um, off First Street in Simi. It's called Stiffy Suzuki. Huh. Okay. Satellite. I remember that. Yeah. They were the first guys to bring the baggy gear in. Gotcha. Which I wasn't a big fan of. <laughs> I'd been a Fox sponsored rider for a lot of years and signing with that team, they wanted me to wear the baggy over the boot stuff and I wasn't real no. excited <laughs> about that. That was like the, uh, that the was punk a step rock down. team. It was a punk rock team, but that was the era too. Right there right. in 1999 was the cusp of this whole like crossbreeding of sport. Right. Based on the warp tour, the old uh, the the concert tour. So all the athletes from different sports were coming together because of the music mm-hmm. and this whole new like free riding, freestyle, counterculture, punk rock scene really started to flourish within the motor- motocross community. But it was a lot like Rollerblader, rollerbladers and skateboarders. Right. You just don't hang at the same space. Right. Right. And so the devout racers didn't really hang with the, the punk rock scene. Right. But it was like transitioning. And I was really drawn to that whole music scene. <laughs> and I loved the music and I loved the girls and, you know, the vibe. <laughs> so course. I fit into that team. Uh huh. Perfect. Perfect. So anyway, I. Had my accident and life forever changed, but the motorcycle never left me. Right, as he rode here today on his <laughs> own motorcycle. So, do you think in the back of your mind, or you probably had so much time to think about it as you're laying there in your recovery, was the motorcycle driving some of that? Was it th- that will to get back on the motorcycle? Actually, not necessarily. Not a, okay. No, not in the beginning. I really understood the gravity of the situation and the fact that the chapter was was closed, like the book was closed on what I was doing, um, which actually helped my recovery process because so many times people want to get back to what was, get right. back to life, get back to racing. I just knew that, man, I was really in a really um, transformative state. There was no way I was just going to rebound out of that. and to cling to that desire yeah. was um, just too, too painful. may have been way too painful. It would have yeah. held me back. How old were you when that happened? 20 years old. 20 years yeah. old. So I was a baby, you know. I was full of piss and vinegar, like <laughs> a young, ambitious male, independent, so I thought, and uh, thought I had everything in control. I've looked at some of your stuff, and you've got this kind of like – mind body and you know lifestyle. your lifestyle that you've kind of grasped when did that start that's an evolution yeah i mean this is 22 years later and i've really been a student of my suffering right i've listened and learned my body and applied my mind in ways that have allowed me to do things with this injury that the doctors definitely said wasn't going to be possible right and i I um, argue against that kind of, I'd say, prognosis. You know, for a healthcare professional to plant a seed of hopelessness in the beginning and say, this is what you won't do, and statistically you are one in a million or one in whatever, it's so, man, defeating. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they give up right away. Right away. Then there's no hope. Right. And so for that, that person in the throes of that, what do you do with that kind of information? It is not helpful mm-hmm. at all. <coughs> so what I actually prefer a doctor to tell me is the facts. Like, what did you do technically to my spine? Um, what are the levels of injury? What is the, you know, the severity of it? Tell me what are the secondary complications? Like, what will happen to my body if I just sit here and do nothing? I mean, there's a long list For sure. you know, of complications that people suffer from and say, okay, well, your outcome is going to be really predictable if you don't do something. Right? I can tell you. Just completely sure. spin it. But if you flip it and say, okay, if you really attack this, adopt a, a life of you know, uh, health and wellness, pursue recovery, listen to your therapist, learn about your body and its systems, um, then the responsibility is on me now. Right. It's on the patient. And then... You know, then you can say, well, I don't know what your outcome is going to be. There are a lot of great stories out there being shared now mm-hmm. compared to 20 years ago when I was injured. Right. I mean, well, that's the hopefully the platform 
you know that this allows people to see if even if one person one person is like hey i'm going to do something different today because of that story whatever it is that they're doing yeah if you make that that mark we've done you know our job so it's very and you even flatlined right yes as i as i we were just talking that that is by far the most profound experience and the foundation from which i live from today um it was a few a few days after my injury i was um after surgery completely paralyzed intubated so on life support and a complication is pneumonia with a, an injury like mine my body is completely paralyzed i can't clear the the fluid in my lungs and uh multiple times a day i would have a respiratory therapist come in and like suction like a vacuum cleaner in right. my chest it was torturous it's horrendous and uh this one day my lungs were filling and my dad was in the room and i'm staring at him i can't speak because i'm intubated the therapist or the, the nurse was about to suction my lungs and there was an emergency other in the hospital and so she handed that device to my dad and said she'll be back but left oh. and so i'm like blinking at my dad trying to tell him i'm suffocating and um, I could hear the life support. I could hear the heart rate monitor. I could see in my peripheral vision the, the numbers, the oxygen level dropping from 89, 88, 87. Jeez. And it's like being trapped under ice or something, right? You can see, but you can't uh, do anything about it. So you're it. laying there watching your own movie. Yeah, I'm watching it happen. And you can't do anything about it. Nope. And you fight, like, there's an incredible, like, primal desire to live. Like, the, the will to live is strong when you're on that edge. Right? Even if you're depressed, right? Like, if I were to stand on a bridge and want to jump, the moment you step off, you're like, ah, oh, wrong move. Right. So I'm at that edge, and I just <sighs> released. And it was beautiful. It was... um. I've used the analogy of a raindrop falling through the sky symbolizing my life in form. I'm the drop. And the moment I land in the ocean, I instantaneously become formless, a part of the vast whole. Mm. So my physicality, my consciousness, my form, all dissolved instantaneously um, into pure potential like I said all science all spirituality all religion everything alludes to this experience everybody tries to articulate what it is we all try to solve that riddle and we use our language to try to convey or articulate what it is right. but it's it's feeble I cannot say the words <laughs> that explains what it is other than the feeling of bliss yeah and limitless potential. I became you, I became this, I am that. I could manifest into any form, any time, for any reason. And it was beyond space, beyond time, beyond explanation, and it was beautiful. But it wasn't your time. No, then unfortunately, fortunately, I was- <laughs> So when you came back, I you was were like, bummed. You were like, I was yeah. in the zone. I was, I was feeling good. Yeah, Taking well, this zone, the vibe's great, and boom, now my heart beats. And I'm, I'm I'm back. It's like stuffing the proverbial genie back in the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like stuffed me back into this body, and this body is really heavy now. Yeah. It's really heavy. It, I wear concrete boots when I walk, when I move. Well, everything. you were saying earlier, sometimes you're not firing at the same time. Sometimes Man. you've got a stiff muscle. Your back's, it just... Yeah, it's a real it's conscious, a process, conscious process. Yeah. When I when I move, it's because I'm thinking about it. Right? And that's a that's a challenge but you time. had to have a really positive attitude before this accident even happened you know i was happy-go-lucky i was told because <laughs> if you were a bummer dude before you no, might I, have not i loved leading the pack i loved having a lot of fun i yeah. loved making an adventure out of everything i did and you're doing the same with That's, what you're doing right now i think the key is i've transformed my adversity into adventure yeah every little thing i think of as it's a challenge and I can 
explore it and understand something new. I can learn. I can, you know, it's a spectrum. Well, hmm. we're big believers in fate, and and because we've just run into such really incredible things, like meeting you as an example. Um, but it wasn't your time, and there's some fate in there. Maybe it was you needed to have a daughter. Maybe it was. Hey. You, you don't know, right? Maybe it's helping one person. Maybe it, to show and your desire and drive. I mean, you walked across the Mojave Desert, <laughs> Death Valley. Yeah, like, what, I've I've said what it. What was that about? <laughs> well, I've said it before. I am immensely grateful, and yeah. I would not change a thing. And some people, you know, are taken aback by that statement, but it is absolutely true. I'm so lucky to have had a second chance and to be able to live a life of action and purpose and to to share this journey and to do it in all these different ways walking across the desert you know the, these are these are my ways of exploring the limits of who and what i am mm -hmm. so well we need that map because we're going to walk the same you want to do it trail that you did yeah i'll show you <laughs> i've i've flown over it in a Southwest airplane looking down and going, oh, there it is. <laughs> so where did you start that at? Um, just, I'd say north. If, you, if you're going up to 15 and you hang a left on at Baker. Yep. Um, so Aaron Baker had to get off yeah, at Baker. Of at Baker. <laughs> and Baker was actually my destination back. So the runway at the airport in Baker was my landing strip. So you went up. You went north. I went up. up. I went all the way up and then turned around. Got dropped off in the middle of nowhere with my buggy. So my, then you came back to Baker. I came back. Gotcha. So through Shoshone and those that area. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, because you have to go that way to get back into Baker. You just keep hearing the song, Been Through the Desert. Over yeah, the right, right. <laughs> yeah, that was. I was <laughs> just playing in my yeah. head. <laughs> At times I wish I had a horse. Yeah. <laughs> now my iron horse. My yeah. <laughs> and you could do that same run now oh. on your bike, no big deal. Blow past it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, we probably and went right through there. <laughs> we did. It, yeah, couple, I mean, yeah. it goes Baker, Shoshone, yeah, yeah. up I can't the... wait to do longer rides. I've been working on my saddle fitness, riding local stuff, going up and down the coast, Santa Barbara, Ojai, rode out to Salton Sea. I mentioned that was my longest pull. Yeah. I was 350 miles. That's yeah. good. It's a good. Yeah, it was a good day. Yeah. It was the wind through that corridor uh, near Palm Springs with all those windmills. I'm Velcro to the throttle, and when that headwind hits me, that means I'm whiskey throttle. Right. Yeah. So. Aaron wears a special glove that yeah. holds on to his, his throttle. I rode here. That's why I'm still wearing it. It's, yes, he rode here. So what do you ride? What did you build? What did we build? My buddy Jim and I built, um, well, it, it, the donor bike was a 98 Heritage Softail. Um, fully LA gangster, white and purple, chrome, ape hangers, uh, all the bells and whistles, and I stripped it down, yep. tore it all apart, and used the frame and the Evo motor and put a DNA axle um, and two weld racing sprint car wheels. Sprint cars have a, a staggered stance, so I used two left rears. Really? And I used the fuel cell out of it, so huh. the, the back end, so it looks somewhat cool if you're going to ride a trike. Yeah. I was always, you know, they were always ugly to me because they, they either had a huge gap between the wheels right. or they had this big luggage and all this crap. And <laughs> so I figured if I'm going to ride it, it needs to have some style. It needs to have a line. It needs to have a good stance, squatty but sporty, um, and chopped out, you know, old school. It is, too. So did, <laughs> they, <laughs> did <laughs> they use that in the Mad Max um, <laughs> <Really>? movies? <laughs> I don't <no>? know. <laughs> they, if they want to. One bike night at, <laughs> right? at Farley, yeah. We rode up, and that's where we all met, yeah. bike night. Yes. And we won. Yeah, right on. Right? What's your uh, scabbard on there? Uh, that's that's for my cane. Yeah? Yep, yeah, right off the old horse. There it is. I, I uh, jam this thing in there, and I ride fast and walk slow. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that, ride fast and yeah, walk right? slow. You want to walk slow to smell the roses. <laughs> Maybe talk a little bit about Wings for Life or some of the other foundations. Yeah, I'd love to. I'm I'm really passionate about supporting the spinal cord injury community. Uh, Wings for Life is an organization that has a real targeted mission, which is to find a cure for spinal cord injury because it's an injury. 
and injuries can be cured right. or fixed. Um, at least that's the, the consensus. And so Wings for Life is the charity of choice of Red Bull. And Red Bull throws its entire weight internationally behind this cause. And to know that, I mean, it just hits me in a way that uh, drives me to, to just share my time with them and to speak about it and to help raise funds to fund the projects, the scientific research around, not just here in the States, but around the globe. They're headquartered in Austria with Red Bull, but here in the States, Wings for Life USA is right here in Santa Monica. Right. So we raise um, as much money as possible for these projects, Red Bull matching every single dollar. Wow. So are we gonna do something with yeah, that? Yeah, well, we'll do something on the next one, but the link for Wings for Life is will be in this drop, so people can go donate uh, on, on your behalf, but we will do some other things as well. But yeah, it's interesting to me, coming out of the banking world, you know, we look at a lot of these foundations, and I'm on, I was on an allocation committee for the United Way, and the blood drives were big donors, right? And we'd go in and look at these uh, charitable organizations, and oftentimes it was 60%, maybe 70% yeah. at the most would go towards the, the actual cause mm -hmm. because of all the overhead and everything. And this this is dollar for dollar. That's amazing. Yeah, Red Bull covers all the operations of it. Yeah. And I was just reading there's just – it started because there's just not a lot of funding for spinal cord injury. Well, yeah, the, the genesis – There wasn't when it started. Maybe there's better now, but – well, we're driving that. Yeah. We're definitely leading the way um, as one of the largest funders of, of research. The genesis of the organization was because the founder of Red Bull's best friend, Hans Kinnegadner, motocross champion from Austria, his son, Hannes, um, filled in for him at a charity event race oh, no. and broke his neck oh. and became a quadriplegic. And Hans, being best friends with Dietrich, founder of Red Bull, they just put their fist her. down and went, why is there not more being done? Right. Why can we not find a cure? And so that's where, you know, the seed was planted. That's where Red Bull said, we're going to form this organization and stand behind you and vow to find a cure. Right. And that was 2004. And I've been a part, you know, not long after. You're on their this. board. I'm on their board of directors for the U.S. So you have to have a big belief to be in the board as well. Like I'm all right in, man. It. I yeah. live this. That's 2004. That's a I live this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. But I'm also very passionate about you know uh, influencing the quality of life for individuals now here right. in our community. What can we do to expedite recovery? And that's why I'm involved with another organization that's local. It's called Artists for Trauma with our mutual mm -hmm. friend yeah. Laura Sharp. That's how we met. It's through it Artists for Trauma. Through Artists Laura. Trauma. And so I'm on the board there with with Laura as well. Um, in more of a leadership role now and I'm thrilled to be able to use that platform to help folks that are in hospital or just getting out of hospital express themselves through artistic mediums mm -hmm. right because a lot of times like we were talking about the psychological aspect of healing from trauma it doesn't have to be spinal cord injury it can be you know burns it can be amputations it can be stroke it can be you know a lot of suffering. Right, right. And so by giving people a vehicle like art, right. which is completely, you know, liquid, right? People can express in all these different ways. We want to be able to facilitate that. So that's why we raise money and stimulate our, our community that way. Hmm. So we've got, what, a couple new shirt designs. There's going to be a hat designs if we just donate a portion of the proceeds to artists for trauma we would love that should we do that that's amazing this month in december so josh Come will put on. the links out um you're welcome to donate yourselves thank um, you guys but we'll also throw some money towards the proceeds of any sales that are done this so what shirt are we going to do it on the, these the, the compass shirt so the see you down the road shirt the mm. compass shirt so whatever cool. it is every shirt how much so cool. five bucks five dollars <laughs> from every shirt sold will go to that charity oh. do you know the guy from uh he has another inspiring story. He, uh, Travis Pastrana's group. Yeah, uh, Phil Smash. Yes. Smash. Yes. God, his recovery. I've been following his He's stuff crazy. because he was like doing push ups and he was like, he, his attitude's like yours. 
Yeah, he was incredibly inspiring. I watched his entire recovery. Right. And it was so cool to see how open he was. He shared all the dirty <coughs> Everything. details. Yeah. Everything. And he really did come back from a severe injury. And he, today you would never know. Yeah. He, he jumped a what was a side by side. Oh man. And the thing cartwheeled and he, he broke has that footage, yeah. Broke yeah. his neck. That was frightening. Yeah. I mean he launched that thing hundreds of feet. Yeah. And to watch it come down and hit the ground and just Yeah, the fact that he survived it was miraculous. Right. And the recovery, you know, he, he had a strong mind, he had an amazing community. He was Everybody always happy. Rally. Yeah, even through this whole thing, you're I would like, say oh. that's happy go lucky. Yeah, that guy right there. <laughs> but that's kind of you. Yeah, cool. You know, huh? I, you know, I was told like, be like Johnny Appleseed. You know, just travel around, plant little seeds of hope, yeah. inspiration. <laughs> that's the way to do it. And then water. That's what our viewers do for us. I mean, we, we thought we were going to inspire them, but they tell us all the time how great things are, and that's they how it their works. First bike, or they went on a trial, and they're father and son got together finally and it just all these amazing stories i was telling you about the ms story as well yeah. earlier so it's just heart-wrenching for us i mean our whole thing was we're here to inspire people to get out on the open road and ride but we've gotten so much inspiration from people that love it that we're inspired i mean hell we're trying to steal her dad's song <laughs> cool we might just put that in one of the uh videos of this series we'll see yeah um, yeah, we man, bring that mic over. About that. It's just crazy hearing what you've gone through. And I said, here, you know, I've had two back surgeries mm. myself. I've had my spine fused together two times. Mm. And it's like I have my, my daily complaints and everything. And I sit here and look at you, and it's just like puts things into perspective. Like, like just get off my ass. And there's so much more to do and accomplish. You know, right. like what, what people are doing. The other guy you were talking about what he's overcome right. just puts everything into perspective of what you are capable of and what your body is capable of and how much your mind plays the mind is the, huge that is and really heart expensive. though you have to have the heart to right. do it the fight to do it i mean you have a lot of fight in you you know people that's that's a quality not everybody has too it's just that will to want more right that's interesting it it, it is a harmonious combination of heart and mind you have to balance those two. The heart has to drive it. The mind has to, you know, activate. And to to stimulate that in dark times is the challenge. Mm -hmm. And our suffering is relative. I mean, you go through what you go through, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it, it cannot be diminished. You have to feel it, live it, acknowledge, and then make a choice. Mm -hmm. And we all do. Yes. But we get to. Right. I think that's the change, right? It's not we have to, we get to. Right. So is that where your mind, body, and then you create this lifestyle that you... Yeah, I mean, if when your, wor when your thoughts, your words, and your actions all like become harmonious, yep. when they all align, then you're like living at your highest, I'd say, version of yourself. And that's, if you can perpetuate that in your lifestyle, if you can set your life up in a way that, that cultivates more of that, there's more synergy between the things you do, the things you think about, the things you talk about, the people that you engage. When you can align all those things, yeah. then I'm talking about lifestyle quality, right? Like now you're you're not wasting your time. Right. So motorcycles have been in your <laughs> life since you were three or four years old. Three years old, man. And they, they're so powerful that everything that you've been through, the quest for the bike is still there. It evolved, yes. I didn't seek it. It just... It happened. There was something in the back of me that um, knew that if, you know, the timing and all the pieces came together, uh, that I would do it. I wouldn't be scared, yeah. although there was fear. Um, I would calculate it. I would, you know, be smart about it. And it has panned out. I am riding, I'm riding well, I'm happy, bugs in my teeth and all. <laughs> I don't know many guys that Velcro their hand or their throttle. You're right. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> and when I tell the cop that pulls me over, hold on a second, <laughs> he won't know what to say. Right, right. So we got uh, Billy Diaz in the house. Billy boy. 
said, that's my boy. Aaron has always been wild and loves life. One of my most inspirational friends and partner in crime back in the day. Cool, Billy. Boom. So we got a bunch of positive comments. People are digging it. Yeah. We had a little bit of a connection issue earlier, but I think that little plug fixed it. Let's see here. Let's start from the top. We get everyone saying hello. Rhode Island redneck in the house. Daryl Oaks riding with shags. Military bikers. Sets her. All the regulars. Um, <laughs> see if we have any questions for everyone. Let's see. Uh, everyone's just digging it. Kevin Kent. This gentleman is amazing. So inspiring. Makes you realize that life isn't so bad after all. Her notebook and sunglasses. Do you want those? We'll see you soon. Go that way. Let's go get breakfast or lunch at the old place. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya. Bye. Do we have any uh, questions for Aaron for all those watching right now? Um, and then also, while we're waiting for G Man to get back, uh, if you check out the description, there's links for Aaron's website, social, blog, all that stuff, as well as all the uh, foundations. If you're just tuning in, you can donate via the do- donation in the description or we're also donating for every see down the road compass shirt and, and we're back Aaron's gonna have to leave with a see down the road compass shirt so he can will. so he can uh, say hey buy one of these shirts and, and we're gonna get donations <laughs> I'll wear it with pride yes hey, so what is Aaron's uh, in- Instagram and his website is it I am yeah the letter I the letter M just no apostrophe Aaron Baker dot com Instagram, Twitter, face space. Yeah. Give him, give him a check. <laughs> Where's the best place that they could see anything if they wanted to learn more? My website, just I'm Aaron yeah. That's great really, stuff on there. Yeah, it's got yeah. the history there. It's got a timeline of stuff. Um, I've really tried to catalog a lot of, of this journey. And so, so talk you, a little bit about the journey. So it was like the first four years was just ruthless right it's like four years of quarantine yeah right like really my world stopped as we just experienced like the world as i knew it just completely stopped and i was in a bubble for many years just focused on rebuilding my life literally one tiny flicker of movement did you have a nice support team my mother my mother. mother primarily she's a a warrior Here's to mom. Cheers to toots. Yeah. Toots. toots. That's what I call her. <laughs> yeah, my toots. She um, she devoted herself to to me and in such a selfless, unconditional, loving way. Um, I can't repay her. Well, and she would. I gave her a granddaughter. Yeah, and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and she wouldn't do it any other way. Mothers. Well, I, I get it now. I yeah. get it now. Yes, now that you're a father. I get it. Well, and yeah, I mean, you can't explain that to people. Not No. I mean, when you have a child, there's a whole different level of love that comes to you. Yeah. And and when you experience that, I, I get it too, what she was doing. I'll tell you. Because you would do that for your children. It was, um, you know, I had a lot of um, uh, hesitation. I, there was fear around you know, taking this leap, uh, the responsibility with this injury. You know, I've said before, I'm a big baby, right? Like it takes a lot of time and energy and resources and uh, just to deal with my condition. Right. And so for me to then, you know, uh, bring another life into this world, I didn't want to um, be irresponsible with that. Um, But... That fear was instantly evaporated the moment I held her. She looked at me and looked right through me. Like, the injury was irrelevant. It didn't matter. The thing that monopolized my life for so many years mattered no more. Now I'm a father. A primal instinct was activated. Like, cellularly, I was turned on. Like, this is what I'm meant to do. I'm made to do this. Uh, The paternal... Yeah. instinct is like on but now she's one and she's running from you dude. so you better figure out <laughs> well, some yeah. stuff dude <laughs> i gotta protect i gotta provide i gotta guide like so here's the you're, you're in the hospital and the doctors are like you won't even be able to feed yourself yeah this is that negative stuff that they always give you now i'm feeding feed her <laughs> now you're feeding her that's the the 
It's amazing. That's full circle, right? Yes. Like that's that's life, the full spectrum of life, and man, I love it. You were able to hold her. Now you're feeding her. You're changing her diet. You're probably doing everything that you probably thought you never would do. It was the furthest thing from my awareness <laughs> at that time. I mean, at 22. Yeah. But yeah, so getting back to you know those first handful of years was just really <clears throat> focused, laser, laser focused. I said in that process, shoot, if I was this focused and dedicated in my training and racing <laughs> who knows where i would have gone so it was four five and six right yep right in the middle there's well this scar is the the uh the surgery and this kind of faint one right here was from my long ride two weeks ago <laughs> what yeah the, my i have oh. a half well my half shell i just put some mole skin on it because the dang strap Oh. It was so windy in my head, I couldn't get it tight enough, and it kept blowing my head, and it was cutting my throat. Why I came you wear a full face? <sighs> well, when I start doing those long hauls, I might. They, yeah. It's a, just a protection, you know? Yeah, I know. Especially I got a rains. whole bunch of full faces in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> so, physical therapy, treatments, mm -hmm. just a whole regimen. A lifestyle of it. Yeah. That's really what it was. It. it I've said it, it was rebuilding and then redefining who I am um, in that process and years, decades of work. Um, so what was the analysis originally? You were full par paralyzed below mm -hmm. the neck. Right. Um, when you break a cervical vertebrae, you're typically diagnosed as a quadriplegic. All four limbs are involved. Every system of the body impacted or affected in some way. It's because of it, the nerves. That it's electrical, yeah. You can think of the spinal cord as like a, a garden hose, right? And it's just flowing with signals to and from the brain and body. And if you can kink it, you know, it interrupts that flow. But this is electrochemical, right? So it's electricity. You cut the wires of a, of a fiber optic cord, you're not going to get, right. you know, the connection. Hmm. And essentially, that's what a spinal cord injury is. And so... The higher the level, the less function. Christopher Reeves, the hangman's injury, yep. um, that's why so many die. That's why if I was left alone out there, I would have perished. You know, because nothing works. You can, the little experiment you can do is put your hand on the table, make a fist like this, put your hand on the table, extend your ring finger. Try for me to do it. Try to lift your ring finger. You can't. Now apply that to all your limbs. Wow. You see how, like, just, it, it doesn't make sense. Right. Wow. So that feeling is, like, shocking, and you go into shock. And it's as easy as flipping the lights off. Yeah. That's how quickly. And they, they can't repair that. Not with, you know, the current, I'd, I'd say, uh, uh, methods. But they're working on it. It's getting closer and closer all the time. There's but tons of different... But that's what blows my mind. So you, you had that happen. Mm -hmm. You're from the neck down, but you're sitting here and you're pulling your legs up, you're moving your hands. How Did it regrow, reconnect? Was it from the hard work? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, it's every injury is vastly different. Outcomes are dramatically different in, in return of function. I can say that... Uh, what I did definitely improved my chances of recovery and quality of life. There is something that is well known now called neuroplasticity, and that is that the nervous system regrows neuropathways, yeah. both in the brain and the spinal cord. And that's what they're really trying to exploit now, is, Accelerate that growth is neuroplasticity, or, to yeah. give the nervous system a roadmap of yeah. how and where to grow. Otherwise, the tissue can grow rogue, become tumorous, mm. right? Because it doesn't really have the blueprint to get around a scar tissued area. But for me, it started with a lot of visualization. Like I somehow instinctually understood the electrical system that, well, my death experience, right? Like I just could understand this vehicle. It's like once you understand your bike, right? You know everything about it, you know how it works. Right. I knew that about my system. And so I was already familiar with, with um, visualization, just from racing. Mm -hmm. It's a technique a lot of top guys use to, you know, see the track, see technique, see, you know, 
perfect form. And so I just started to apply that to the body. And I could see myself internally. And I knew that it was just electricity that I was guiding into my body through this network of wiring, so to speak. Um, my sister came in and painted my toes with her nail yeah. polish just for like shits and giggles. She was trying to cheer me up. It, at first, I was not into it at all. I mean, gotta love you, sis. Love you, sis. I do, and thank you for doing it. But, but then you use it as inspiration. I used it as a target, a mental focal point, right? I started to because, I mean, the electricity in your body is ambiguous. Like, what, what is it really? How do you see it? Is it white? Is it colorful? Is it? How do I influence it? But because I had colorful targets to look at as I'm laying in the bed for hours and hours and hours and days. I started to stare at the colors, the blue, the red, the orange, the yellow, the green. And I filled my body with these colors. I would focus my mind on the left big blue toe. And I would bring that color up like colorful lines of electricity into my leg and up the spinal cord into my mind. And I would swirl it around the injury site and then I would push it back down into the toe and I would tell my toe what to do. Hmm. It was like a piece of you string say, was attached to, to my toe. I want you to And I could just make that connection. I did that with the red. I did that with the, the green and the so yellow. So your sister did a really great thing. She is a magician. <laughs> <laughs> but so see, you're an entrepreneur. You like to create things. You like to do things. You, you're a thinker. You want to make things happen. That had to help with how you are today. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I still paint my toes. I need a pedigree. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you go ahead. I was going to say, I'll tell you one thing. When I, I got in my crash and before the surgery, they, they did a nerve block. Mm. So I'm sitting there in the bed and it was just the weirdest, phen I don't know, phenomenon, if you will. I'm sitting there staring at my foot, just trying to get a twitch out of my toe, a millimeter. Yeah. And it was just the weirdest feeling not being able to grant that that's a short-term thing but it was just kind of mind-blowing frightening yep yeah yep. well so you go through kind of four years of this just intense mm -hmm. and then what happens kind of in that fourth or fifth year you kind of start well i'm making progress making some progress because you've done some other really cool things after this as well yeah i guess i'm always you know looking down that that road i love you know the the perspective lines of a long road leading to a horizon right right like there you guys are right there <laughs> um, that's how I see my life so I'm always looking for like the next thing so in my process of recovery a twitch of a toe you know contraction of a muscle the flexion of a muscle group and I'm starting to get this functional movement now what do I do with that I want to express it right I don't want to just turn the pedals of a stationary right. exercise machine i want to have the wind in my face so i couldn't ride a bicycle too sketchy too weak but i could ride a tandem bicycle theoretically i thought okay i saw one in the rehab center that i was at which happened to be cal state northridge they had a a great program there called the center of achievement which is a teaching learning lab for the kinesiology students and there was this funky old two-seater bike up on the wall. And my only reference was the Double Mint commercial, Double yeah. Gum. Right? Double yeah. your pleasure. There it yeah. was. And I thought, there it is. Like, I could be strapped on the back of that thing and somebody that's strong and able on the front, shifting the gears, breaking it, and balancing it. And that was the genesis of, like, the next level of recovery. It went from tiny little steps and movements in rehab to riding a tandem bicycle with my mother. Wow, your mom. Yeah, Toots. Toots, Toots rode the, took the lead. Toots is a workhorse. That <laughs> gal is strong. <laughs> we have laid down thousands of miles around Southern California. Wow. And we ended up riding it, um, well, long story short, we did the LA Marathon. Right. I mean, the first time I got on it, I, I could, would keel over. And my hands were taped to the handlebars, my feet were taped to the, pe or to the pedals. And I could barely ride for five minutes. But day in and day out, five minutes, five miles. National 10, championships, national 
<laughs> campaign. Then we do the LA Marathon, 26.2 miles right downtown. Do that, do it a second and a third time. And then I blurted out while speaking to an audience of newly injured folks and doctors. My mom and I were presenting, and I looked at her, and I just said, man, Tuts, we're riding this thing. Why don't we just do it like Forrest Gump? <laughs> she looked at me, jaw dropped. Audience looked at me like crickets. And uh, I just said, well, yeah, let's ride across country. So I said it publicly, and then I had to put had my to money wow. where my mouth was. <laughs> wow. We trained for three more years, and finally in 2007, m- me and a few of my best friends, Adam Bias, Adam Zerby, Ben Marius, uh, Holland, um, and my mom, we, we set out from Dog Beach, San Diego, went right across the bottom there, 3,182 miles across the southern tier, no down way. through the states. And wound up in Florida at uh, the fantastic. oldest city in the nation, St. Augustine. Right really? Wow. And rode the tandem into the sand. No way. How long did it take? Three and a half months. Wow. Yeah, I told was... you, if the gas is gone and there's no more, <laughs> we could do the two lane. <laughs> we better get some training. Well, you guys, you'd go backwards. You know? right. You're going from motorcycles to bikes. I'm going from bikes to <laughs> right? motors. I mean, I saw you on a, a like a 10-speed or ra- mm-hmm. road bike trike well that's the evolution right i'm still looking down the road i'm right. really tired of sitting behind a sweaty derriere <laughs> <laughs> toots you know, <laughs> you know toots and friends you know yeah. uh being a racer <laughs> being a rider uh not having control is right i'm just a passenger back there right um wind in the face but buffered yeah right but that's okay because it was it gives no it was goal. oh i had tremendous um uh, pleasure, pain, um, but you know, overall, I was so happy to be out there, right? Riding right. it, um, every single mile, every single pedal stroke counted. Yeah, right. It, that's the whole point. Like every single flicker, the things that I've done, they've all stacked up to mean something. It's gotten me a step further to something I want or aspire to. Right. And so every mile was a mile closer to. In that case, the East Coast, and to my independence, right, which was this three-wheeled bike, right, um, and the suit and the whole thing. Oh, the the lycra, the shaved legs, the tan lines, right. Oh yeah, I saw that aerodynamic I se- helmet too. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah sweet. <laughs> severely um, cycle. Um, I was committed. So, do you ride a bike now? A bicycle? It's on the wall in the garage. It sits uh, next to the Harley. Gotcha. <laughs> but that's the evolution again. It's the evolution. Right? I'm, I'm still moving forward. I, I ride that thing periodically. I, it's been a while. But, um, you know, I took it as far as I could go. That was my goal with that tricycle was to ride it. Again, I did it across the country the following year in 2008. Wow. Um, there was only two other bikes like it in the country. It's kind of a big thing in, like, Belgium mm-hmm. and, and Europe, these tricycles. Tricycles actually were the, um, the uh, I don't know, like the, the standard or the elite way of cycling back 100 years ago. Hmm. Three wheels was right. uh, better than two. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so I built this trike with the help of a, a guy from Europe, and I rode from San Francisco 4,202 miles Jeez. to D.C. Wow. But I, I segued. Was that the Lincoln Highway? No, it was the Trans-America Trail. Okay. Uh, started right at the Golden Gate. Went over the loneliest road in America, Highway 50. Yeah, yep. yeah, we've done oh, that. Oh, man. That's 350 or 400 miles yeah. of nothing. Yeah. And you, you hit 15 from there, go down to Cedar City, and then cut through Escalante and down. Beautiful So you went stuff. 80 and That's, then down, to, down the 15. We, 50. Went 50. 50, to 50 over and then just carried 50 from uh, Carson City. Oh, you went through, yeah. You had to have cars whipped by you. Yeah, but we had the rig, too. I had a motorhome. That was the way I did it. It was a, right. similar to my racing days. <laughs> yeah. so you know, I had sponsorship support. So right. you've been on a lot of the roads that we actually ride and do our, our yeah. vlogging on. So when you're out there, you're on a bike. It's either hot. Or it might, you might see a rainstorm coming. You go I through mean, it all. You're dealing all with all that. At about 15 miles an hour. And the worst is the wind. And you're powering through it. <laughs> The oh, headwind, geez. man, on a bicycle, I can cuss and spit. And <laughs> it is just pure suffering. Right. But I did segue. I was in uh, Estes Park, 
at the highest paved road in America. Yeah, we did that too. We came down off of that and gave a presentation right outside of Denver. And somebody in the audience told me that Sturgis was going on. Oh, no way. Or Sturgis was about to go on. Yeah. I said, man, that's good timing. <laughs> so we, we segued up to Sturgis and we wow. rode the, the bikes. My mom and me, Toots was on her own bike now. Wow. So she was riding alongside me. And we had skulls on our on our riding kits, and we went right down Main Street, right next to the old, you know, leather and iron. Yeah. So if any of you want to go to Sturgis and you keep making excuses, even with your motorcycle, find a way to get there, you know? Yeah, I pedaled it. So, <laughs> and then we went right up Rushmore, you know, that, that road all the way up to Rushmore, lined with bikes. We had dudes hollering and high-fiving. And, really? Right. So anyhow, yeah, that was a... Uh, that was a hell of a tour. Did you have to tune your gearing on your bike every once in a while? Because, you know, it gets out of... Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a ton of maintenance on the road, flats, and, you know, just regular old mechanics. Yeah. It was yeah. a lot of miles. So, and then you did some downhill stuff. Yeah. Keep going, right? In like, the mountains, or what was that all about? Well, the evolution, just to keep the timeline going, yeah. we finished with the tour, and I had the fortunate opportunity to to work with the United States Paralympic team, mm -hmm. which is not the Special Olympics, it's the Paralympics, which coincides with the Olympics. Right. So these are all like heavy hitting athletes. Right. A few years before, I had actually taken a little trip down to the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista, just as a tourist. Mm -hmm. Get on the golf cart and check the campus, watch these athletes play, mm -hmm. with the dream of maybe I could become a Paralympic athlete. So that's where that seed was planted. And I thought, all right, well, that's the vision down the road on the heels of these bike tours. Now I'm a seasoned cyclist. So I've like earned my way into that opportunity. And so that was 2000, the heels 2008. So I spent 2009 with the program until 2012 with the goal of making it to the Olympics. Mm. And so I was, I was really focused on time trialing and racing this thing and getting the most out of my body, mm -hmm. sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber, right. like training on a level that is what these guys train on. Right. And that was an extraordinary experience. <laughs> Man, these athletes and coaches and the stuff they've, they've gone through, lived through and do every day was, was a really amazing experience. Long story short, I didn't make the Olympics. On I won some national championships and on the, literally on the, the cusp of going to the World Cup, which is just prior to the games mm -hmm. for the final selection. On paper, I was a shoe-in to medal. But I got sick. My bladder distended. It nearly ruptured. And I was rushed to the emergency room two days before no. I was to get on the oh, flight. Man. And I sent the selfie to my coaches that were already in Rome. I just said, that's it, guys. That's it. That's the end of this oh. this journey. And... In the moment, you know, it's um, frustrated, I'm, dish, you know, depressed. But when I talk about it now and I share this story with people, it's, it's relatable, right? Like people commit large sums of money and resources and time to a goal or an objective and it doesn't pan out the way they'd always wanted it to. And that's life. And we can relate to that. And maybe there's a reason that it There happened. are a lot of reasons, great reasons. I met my wife. Yeah, awesome. I was going to ask when that uh, That was it. Place. Right after that ended, I closed the book on that bike. I hung it on the wall and said thank you to the thousands of miles that it mm -hmm. allowed me to, to experience. And I crashed a wedding and met my wife. Really? <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was that? Really? 2012. 2012. Yep. Yep, it was great. So you crashed a wedding. Uh, it's a, a, a friend of ours. I was friends of the, of the groom, and she was friends with the bride. We'd never met. No way. And at the time, I had, you know, I had just opened my business, so I was driving my van. I had a cargo van that was wrapped with my logo black and bright colors. And I parked the thing right behind the ceremony because I was late. And the ceremony was going, you know, was, uh, proceeding. And I was walking, so I needed to park close, and there was no other parking. So I parked the thing right in the photo op. <laughs> <laughs> and my now wife... Um, helped organize the wedding she was the wedding planner so she saw that i was in this obnoxious van and was a little <laughs> pissed but uh anyhow 
We, uh, but hey, it broke the ice. Broke the ice. Right? Yep. We didn't hang there, but we definitely got together a few days later for some Mexican food. And that was it. How long did you go out before you actually got married? I proposed after eight months. You knew. I wasn't looking. It was the furthest thing from my mind. But this woman, man, unlike anybody I'd ever met, she ticked so many boxes that I didn't even know I had. Right. All these green flags were just like, yes, she is everything and more. I would be an idiot not to <laughs> put a ring on this finger. <laughs> so I did. Well, and she said yes, apparently. And she said yes. Like. She, she saw me. She had no prior experience with any kind of injury or spinal cord injury. or, uh, And she just didn't care. She. That's amazing in itself. She joined me at my pace in life, and she challenges me in the, in the most uh, just beautiful, beneficial ways. We are uh, counterbalances to each other, and it just works. Yeah. And it's, it's it. the best thing I've ever done. Love so it. 2012. That was 2012. And so time goes on. Time goes on, yeah. She... Um, she joined me in my pursuit. My mom and I had opened a, a rehab facility at that time in 2011. So we were really busy and focused on, on making that work. Um, all the while, uh, I'm looking down the road for my next thing. Yep. And I had done all this cycling, um, actually to my own detriment. Uh, I became a proficient cyclist. My legs were strong in an elliptical fashion. My body was like... I formed myself into a cyclist, and it actually affected my walking. Really? My actual function in life. I became dysfunctional and imba imbalanced. I'm still trying to undo a lot of really what I did on the bike. Because you were so committed to that goal. Yeah, and I didn't do enough you know, cross-training to counteract hmm. the, uh, the strength that I built on a bicycle. For the average person, you can still function off the bike. But for me... I have so much asymmetry and so much imbalance that my quads got really big and my calves got big, but the weak links in my body were neglected. And so I was just kind of a mess. So I thought, what can I do that would really help me physically and explore the limits of my mind? Mm -hmm. And I was pushing a shopping cart in the grocery store one day with Katie. And I walked outside with a full cart. It was heavy. But it was windy, really windy. And usually the wind is, you know, my Achilles heel. I'll blow over like a leaf right. without holding on to something. But I was really stable holding this cart. I'm like, man, I could do this. The car's right there, but what if I just kept going? And then past that, if I went... And I just had this vision in my mind of those sailing stones mm -hmm. that you've seen. Yeah. Right. Those... Those isolated rocks out in the middle of nowhere yeah. with a snail trail behind it. I thought, well, that's my pace. If that rock can do it, I can do it. And that's Death Valley. And that's Death Valley. I thought, all right, that's where I'm going. <laughs> so anyhow. And there was, uh, there was one of those in the documentary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that, uh, maybe I won't ask trade secrets, but was that already there? Oh, no. Oh, no. Nope. There were a few. But, I took one of them home with me. Yeah. I've got him. That is one thing I noticed, though, and that's pretty cool uh, comparison. Yeah, I um, I had some some moments with those stones. One in particular that, you know, there was a when I was first injured, I laid on the ground. They were paralyzed, right, initially, and my hand was in front of my face, and I'm staring at my hand, and there's a stone right next to me, and the recognition that there was no difference between my body and that rock if I was left undisturbed I would remain and so hmm. in the desert right. I recognize that again and um, you know it's just profound moments of of gratitude and awareness right like shit we're lucky yeah, yeah. and when you ride you get to think I mean, I know when we, we talk about when we're on long trips, the mind just, it's really healthy because you, yeah. you go places that you don't normally go because you don't have the time to go there. Yep. But on a bike, you have the time to go there. 
truly. I, I value the bike in that way uh, tremendously. So, so anyhow, so I found my way out to the desert. Got myself a baby jogging stroller because I knew I needed a shopping cart-esque type right. device. So a I shopping carry. cart would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been a lot harder to push, <laughs> yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> but this thing had knobby tires. It had suspension. It had brakes. It had, you know, I cut all the baby stuff out of it and put a solar panel and carried all my own gear, my wow. sleeping cot and food. Ate some special food called pemmican, which is uh, an American Indian type food that the settlers used to have out on the plains where it's just like buffalo or, or beef with uh, dried out, a, yeah. dried out, and then uh, finely chopped. You add tallow or rendered fat back to it, and you you put in you know uh, goji berries and spirulina and bee pollen and some other superfood type stuff. You make a sticky little ball out of that thing. Mm -hmm. That was the best food I've ever eaten. Really? It was pure race gas. Wow. Yeah, I lived on that. Interesting. So you how long did that water. take you? It took me a week. Okay. Yeah, a little over and 20 it was miles. 20, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, just self-sufficient. My a friend of mine came out there, and I, I knew I couldn't do it alone. i would be silly and dangerous. Right. I needed to have a plan B. Right, right. I deal with too many issues. Um and the heat. And what blood. time of year did you do it? That's I did it October. So it was time, hot. Yeah. yeah, it was a great time. It was hot in the day, but the night times cooled down quick. Yeah. Um, but again, there's no reprieve. There's no shade. Right. You're just at the mercy of. Right. Um, well, you had your bandana with the hat I had, on. Yeah. yeah, I had <laughs> an umbrella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, it was a, an amazing experience. So from pushing a, a shopping cart, <laughs> is that crazy? That you think about that now? Is it? And that's what gave you the desire and drive to do that. My friend told me, or he says it actually in the documentary film, my friend Adam Bias, he, you know, referencing, I guess, the way I think. If I can do something, if I can take one step, right, the amount of effort it takes me to do one step, why wouldn't I just do it, you know? It, Continuous. Across the country yeah. or continuously. Like, it's just hard to begin with. So at least have fun with it. At least, like, right. explore or do something. So that I guess that's my mindset. So, could, yeah, you've done more in those couple stories than I know people <laughs> have done their whole life. Seriously. <laughs> and not with injury. Well. I mean, you know, people, we were talking about it earlier, these devices. I mean, people, a lot of people are oh. sitting on the couch today watching... You know, lots of documentaries and fun shows, but it's like, let's get out. We need to explore. Yeah. We need to help our minds. We need to, you know, that vastness that we look for. You know, we're in L.A., so it's just, there's stuff everywhere. We get out, you yeah. know, and, and see these open roads and these, we find such passion in meeting these townspeople. You know, whether they're a restaurateur or a gas station owner or a bar owner, and the stories that they have about their place and their passion, you know, that's, we want people to go explore that. Yeah. It's just, it's so easy to look at your phone today and go, okay, that's cool. And never go anywhere. Yeah. Society of voyeurism. Yes. Like, be your own movie. My mom told me when I was young, be your own poster. I hanging, like toots. Toots yeah. is. We're going to have to have I, toots I like here. toots. Yep. Mom, <laughs> I like your vibe. She is the vibe, man. She's an old Cherokee Indian, Norwegian combo. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She's got she's got the blood. So anyhow, I that's I, I get my grit from my grandmother and Tuts. Nice. For sure. That's amazing. Good stuff. So yeah. you, you go do this and then you decide to have a baby or what's the story? <laughs> Every time I mention the baby I'm not gonna say yeah. her name. You can say it, but I we won't do that. But uh, you get this big smile on your face. What's what's that all about? <laughs> well, every time I think of her. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you fast forward again. That was 2013 in the desert. Yep. Um, we spent a lot of good years uh, working the business. Um, that was that was real passion work. Yeah. We provided a door for people to literally come through and improve the quality of their life if they want. Which is, you know, I, I called it the hair club for men because not only was I. Uh, an owner I was a client <laughs> right 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 like I I needed it I know how important it is to right. continue that type of uh, lifestyle and conscious conscientious e exercise right like intelligent exercise anyhow 
And um, that business was core. Yeah, that business is core. It it still exists. Um, you sold it. Out we of did. It, but uh, it just evolved, right? Yeah. Like this whole thing is an evolution of life, and we just came to a to a point where we needed to move on. Yeah. My mother and I are business partners in it, and our other business partner um, just still had the real the, the passion for it, and he himself was uh, one of the trainers. So that was like his life's work. Right, right. right. There was no other direction he would go. So uh, we just made a a real um, conscious decision to go a new direction. And so fortunately, we sold in 2019 just prior to this whole, you know, earth tilting experience, COVID-19. And in that, uh, I just took off like... I let let go of that chapter again, another yep. chapter close, and we start writing a new one. Katie gets pregnant. And um man. Here I am today, a father. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of fathers, we got uh Stella in the house. Hey Stella, how's it going? His granddaughter. Granddaughter. Hey there. So That's awesome. Yeah. So any plans for more? I kind of elbow Katie a little bit. Like, doesn't she need a friend, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, because I have my younger sister. I, I loved. We were close in age, just a year and a half, two years. Right. Same with Katie. Mm-hmm. Her best friend is her sister. Wow. Um, but I don't want to get overzealous. Let's, <laughs> it's only been a year. Almost. Right, 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 right. Well, and it, it just continues to get better. I it, mean, you'll see, and it's you can't tell people either of this, but... You just wait till like two and then all of a sudden five <laughs> and you're just going this is a human being actually that's operating physically and wait till she's so five crazy. and yeah. goes dad <laughs> <laughs> well her little voice i mean she's she's finding her voice she's uh you know making words or it sounds yeah yeah that sound like words um and every day it's something new so she'll be talking before you know it yeah man, man it's it's cliche but it goes fast yeah they say in the end it's a wink of an eye and that's kind of what it is i mean i can't believe it i'm sitting here and i have uh my kids i have grandkids (laughs) and i still feel like i'm 30 running around the country with my buddy and and josh and and it's like how could how could i be already old this old doing this stuff but i don't feel it but, it, but that's inspiring, though, man. Yes. You're setting the bar. Like, you're a North Star for so many, me included. I love it. I want to get better with age. Yeah, and we, you're we all, it. we Look all, you yeah. Like you know, and then we meet living. Josh. I'm only just, 42. Yeah. He, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we meet Josh, a young kid. We meet this 24-year-old guy that loves motorcycles. He has dirt bikes and Harleys yes. and, and filming and editing. But How he's an old happen? soul. And he hangs with with young people and old people just as easy on either side. So, so it's that one we were talking about fate earlier. I mean that he was he was definitely part of our early fate. Yeah. Like we we he edits all this stuff. We started off with four or five layers. He's now up to like 10 layers where he's got sound and some other cool things. Yeah. When we first saw iPhone or iMovie, <laughs> we're both going, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> You know, we've known each other for 30 years. Oh, that's cool. Our yeah. wives worked together 36 years ago, wow. 38 years ago, whatever. But we would hang out at work parties, and then he had his kids, I had my kids, and we'd hang out at work parties go, wow, we'd have a blast. You know, we need to hang out together. But we never did till the next work party. Kids got a little older. We were at a, like, almost like a final reunion work party. <clears throat> And it was like, oh, I got a Harley. Oh, really? I got a Harley, too. And that, that's where it all started. I was wow. scrolling through pictures earlier. I'll show you after we're done, but yeah. I'll show you the first bike I started on. Nice. It's it's a little Strider that my dad made out of conduit and brazed it and <laughs> added some old wheels and its Schwinn handlebar grips. and See? It was awesome. So his dad made the first Strider yeah. 30 years ago or 40 years ago, whatever it was, yeah, 50, 50 years ago. plus. Yeah, and now look at him. Yeah, right. Jeez. Now, my grandson, who's two, has a specialized 
push bike, but it's carbon fiber, and it's <laughs> like it's like you pick it up, and he just rips and does little jumps does and some wheelies. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and the level that these guys are evolving sport to. Oh, you know, motocross. And, yeah. and BMX and gnarly. My little buddy uh, Caden, he's uh, my best friend's son. He's prolific on on YouTube. This kid's a phenom, but I think he's like nine years old now, nine or ten maybe, but he's double backflips and no tail way. whips and like he wants to be the youngest x games sounds like he's superstar he's gnarly <laughs> but he's so young and he's been doing it i mean i watched him in his diaper push his first little strider and wow these guys are elevating the sport human performances yeah, yeah my son has a mountain bike and he has a seat on front of it where his son <laughs> and they do jumps yeah and it's like now this little guy his adrenaline he can't just He's always got a motorcycle in his hand or a truck. Mm -hmm. or So I'm like, you created the same thing that I lived with him, racing his whole well, life. When, when you what introduce that. Yeah. done with the yeah. Nitro Circus and all this. Yes. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's crazy. When you introduce it so young, I mean, that's that seed, right? Right. Like, it's hard to, I always struggle with that when I was a boy. And my mom always tried to get me away from the motorcycle. But since... I rode that at such a young age. There was nothing that compared to it. No. Yeah. The, I guess you get these these endorphins or this energy. Well, you get the smell, the sound, the control, right? Like power, the throttle yeah. gives you a power. It's a superpower. Yes. And so it didn't matter what she introduced. I mean, music, bicycles, skateboards, <laughs> snowboards, surfing. Right. She tried to relocate us to Indonesia when my sister and me were eight and six years old like but nothing compared to that motorcycle right, right. so you got to be careful if you're going to introduce that at a young age you better know that that's going to be in that well it ain't going away well my son got on a four yeah on a pw50 started racing we did the same like ponca city all the yep the whole thing and 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 he was at races with pastrana uh, he was at freestyle events with Pastrana. He did his thing. He changed from, at 15, he got into freestyle. Yeah. And then we did the X Games tour and the Red Bull X Fighters. And he got a gold medal and a bronze medal. And then he retired. And I was happy he retired. But you then know, I got him into Harleys. Well, but we were talking <laughs> about that early. I have a lot of admiration for the guys that are at that level yep. that can know when to fold it. And just say it's been a good run. Right. Thank you, motorcycle. Thank you, what I learned, the travel, the exp experience, and then go on to something else. Right. Like that takes a lot to do that. It's that entrepreneurial. Adventure. It's that hyper focus too. Like yeah. it's finding that next. What What's going to take me to the next level? Yeah, but I mean, it's the motorcycling is a passion, right? So to lay that down in that form. Is, no, is what I really sure. respect. He has a successful business he built now. It's several years old. It's Thrashing Supply. That's Good his, on him. But he's energy. doing that. But he'll say, I love this business and I love my company. But he goes, I'm already thinking of what my next company and what my next thing is going to be. Good on him. So he's doing what you're saying. Yeah. Like lay it down and go to the next you know. I, I, we were talking about this the other night with, at my house. You know, I played college football and that, and we were watching games. And my son was like, "Do you miss that?" And it's it took probably five or six years for me to finally just let it go. Yeah. After I after I finished my little run at it, and it's just it's something that's inbred in you, and it's like it's such a focus, and that's where all your energy and focus and you know, where did that? How do you reapply that? And so we, I had to do that in more of a career type of thing, you right. know. And I finally grasped the, what was going on. But it even today, I look at it and just go, man, I wish I maybe I should have played another year. I, I just one, well, yeah, I just want to hit one more guy because <laughs> I I really enjoyed it. But but I I what stopped it for me was it became more of a job and less mm. of a passion. Mm -hmm. And so I was like. That's it. It's over. I remember Jeremy McGrath told me that once when I was still really young, racing uh, at San Jose Stadium, '92. He, I met him for the first time, and he he took me aside. He says, "The moment this stops being fun for you, hang it up." Yeah. It has to be fun. If it's not, 
it's not worth it. Right. Right. And I remember him telling me that. And uh, there were times before my injury when it wasn't fun. Right. Right. We're grinding a lot of laps, burning a lot of fuel through a tiny little carburetor. Training, training, work, training. pressure to win. Not like it is today. It's more yeah. these days. I mean, you got training farms right. producing these phenoms. But even still, there were times when I was going, man, I heard Jeremy's words going, it's not, it's yeah. not fun. Right. No. And um, it wasn't long after that that I, I had my injury. Hmm. So. so you roll the tape forward now. You built this trike. <laughs> and now your goals are to really get and put some saddle time in and then do some of the old roads you yeah absolutely I'm cycled gonna, on and i'm gonna be the caboose on you guys's train <laughs> for sure if we ought to do a really cool that trip with that absolutely nope i've wanted to i've wanted to you know connect with harley on the on the high level and go to a sturgis or a big event and then auction a bike off on behalf of you know either spinal cord or another org um you know, to ride with more purpose. Right. Right now, it's just pure pleasure. Right. Which is good. It is. You're going to combine the two is the best scenario. Now, would you get on a newer trikes for, for distance? Like, yeah, I'd have to. So knowing that, hey, I'm not going to break down. Yeah. I mean, what I'm riding is a, it's, technically it's a bar hopper. Right? <laughs> um, but I'm enjoying the, our rides right here along right. the coast, up and down Santa Barbara, Ohio, all around. Because um, I imagine the new ones are like ours, where they're yeah, it's just a couch. cush. And, yeah. I'm, I'm lounging right here doing 85. Right. right. <laughs> On my bike, that's not the case. It's a bull. We should yeah. figure that, that out. That thing is a, is a yeah. hard ride. We should get a hold of it. I think we can, we can work on that kind of a thing. I know we've got stuff to do, guys. Yeah. I mean, this isn't, a, fate? This isn't just a one and done thing. We're aligning for a reason. I'm here because I know that your guys' heart's in the right place, what you're doing, how the inspiration is cyclical, right? That's what we're doing. So yeah. I wanna, I'm here to amp it up. Hey. Awesome. We, oh, hey, we dig that. Uh, let's get them on a brand new trike, and we will do <laughs> the, uh, what is that, San Francisco to D.C. Whoa. And do it just like well, Brett. It sounds like he wants to go to Sturgis, right. though. We get well, we donors. Do we can do whatever. Right? I mean, look at the map. It's open. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we need to yeah. mark up. <laughs> I mean, we could retrace the, the bike trail, but I followed a, a set of maps that was 30 to 60 mile increments. Oh, right. So now we're going to cover you know, right. a ton more. Right. And I think you could, you said you've done 300 on your motorcycle? Yeah, on my bike now. So I'm saying if you had a new new one, oh, we you could, could do... Do that all, all I mean, day, every day. A, what, a 300 to 500, 600 mile day maximum? Is that, that's kind of what... Yeah, I mean, we... If you plan, we it. used to do four, at least five to six, seven hundred. It kind of that was our sweet spot. Now it's probably more like four. Because we're filming. Just because we're yeah. filming, we're getting in later. You know, just so it's kind of eating up a little bit of our time. But, but we'll do whatever. Well, I'm I training mean, on my hog yeah. now, so by the time I get on something plush, yeah, you guys will have to hang with me. <laughs> well, <laughs> we could just go two hundred miles and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i'm down for a short ride anytime <laughs> any comments or questions oh we got some comments we got people asking about the shirt um we got riding with yogurt it says physical strength for recovery is one thing the mental strength needed is unimaginable we have heroes that go over and beyond to save a life and you sir i see you as a hero bless you for your story Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We got Thanks, you. Shannon. That's and great. You're words. absolutely right. It is the mind. And so many today are suffering with mental health issues right. because of current affairs. Everything, everybody going through a lot of stuff. Yeah. It doesn't have to just be an injury. I no. mean, trauma comes in many forms. So that's part of my mission today is to help lead people out of the dark and into the light with, you know, ways of thinking and applying you know, intentional choices that become habits, become routines. And that is how you can forge your way through, you know, seemingly impossible scenarios. Mind, body, lifestyle. That's I'm it. Kind of feeling some fate yeah, for happening sure. right now. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, mostly just uh, along the same, oh, I'm turning myself up a little too bit, too high. Uh, D Rider, very inspiring guy. Uh, we got Luis in the house from Chile watching. It's always uh, always great seeing people from all over the world checking in. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see. One yeah, swell guy says, good interview, guys. I'll be ordering some shirts. Awesome. Uh, Kevin Meads, hi from Sydney, Australia, guys. Great work, and the shots on the move are awesome. The best on you, too. Um, Thank you. R.I. Redneck, <laughs> I should be hitting the, hitting the sack because 5 a.m. comes fast, but I can't stop watching. <laughs> um, and Randy Tassie, what a team you all would be. Yes. Would be, should be. Yes. Back to you. you. want to play his video clip one more time, and then we'll get into the shirt donation. Yeah, if you want a bathroom break, whatever, I'll play that real quick, guys. This is uh, Coming to My Senses, a feature film. Um, let's find that. You want something? Sounds good. Did you want okay. One of my earliest memories is Thank on you. my little peewee. So, yeah, I think... Uh, I'd twist the throttle, but I'd look back, and, I think we're gonna and I'd watch my rear tire just spin out. Cool. And it was just... To the right people. Liberation. It's, it's just tying the lace. Aaron grew up thinking he was get together yeah. for the right reason. I think he was about three years old when he yeah, was on motorcycle. Dad, doing most of the shit around here, so we learned together. This is eat, and this is starve. In other words, find out. Yes, are you a go? I thought I was in control. Invincible. No. So, you know. I picked up his hand and it was just like, no life. In that situation, the probability of any recovery of function is almost zero. Multiple neurosurgeons gave me a one in a million chance of ever feeding myself again. The question is, can we sometimes be wrong? I remember he told me, he's like, this will not be my fate. I will beat this. When we were discharged from the hospital, we literally had nowhere to go. I was asking, where can we go? They said, Laquita, there are no other places for you to go. Although I'd been at this for a year, I was really starting to build some momentum with recovery. When I first met Aaron, I could blow on him and he'd fall backwards. Oh, buddy. When someone says they're relearning how to walk, think in terms of how an infant starts to walk. What do you think I'm doing? The only way out of this place is on, on my own two feet. Every single step I took across that desert was every single flicker of movement that I had built on over a long period of time. Ah! Challenge to him is part of his life. I have more fear in sitting still. He feels most alive when he's on the brink of death. Aaron walking 20 plus miles would have to equate to your average person climbing Mount Everest. Wait up, Sarge. <laughs> Lieutenant Baker's coming. The battle would be over by the time I reached the scene. Wait up, fellas. I'm coming. We ride, it's unusual, but all three of us actually, we ride these excellent trips and we have so much fun on these journeys we take, but we all ride to the office every day. We don't, you won't find us in a car. We're all- Especially gas prices, man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it makes way like, more sense. I always say everywhere I go is a good time, even if it's to the office, because I, you're always smiling in your helmet. It's, yeah. it's and we, we, we'll be done filming and we'll have 300 miles to home. And we're in the headsets, making our own show. <laughs> Nothing's being recorded, but we're having a blast just screwing around with each other. You uh, know? Hey, we need to call out. We've got a couple orders in. Oh, see already for the day. Uh huh. Well, oh, man. let's see here. We got a couple orders for shirts, which we will be donating to the cause. Uh, so first, oh, that's that's Evan West, but he did buy a shirt with his parts order as well. So shout out to Evan. Uh, we got one swell guy who's actually watching right now. He's from Weberville, Michigan. Kylie Byrne. Uh, we got Kylie Byrne. And if you're leaning forward, they can't hear you. And I don't know if you can see it, guys, but see the back of the shirt there? It's a cool shirt. See you down the road? See y'all down the road. See y'all down the road. What size is that one? This is a large. Cool. If we have black and we have uh, navy. navy blue, we'll get nice. you... A, one it's of each killing. so you can sport the cause. You have black and navy blue on your, your shirt right there. Oh, yeah. It was colder there in uh, Studio City today. Yeah. Yeah, the fog was all socked really? in. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Have you guys read the book uh, 
Zen and the Art of Motorcycle. Sure movies. have. You well, have. I read about three quarters of it. Get through it. Yep. All That's right. a good one. It was funny. The uh, One of my friend, documentary filmmaker, got me into it. He told me about the book, and he doesn't ride, but he understood that it wasn't actually about motorcycles. Um, and, you know, the first couple of chapters, I was just, it aligns so much with what we do in many exactly. ways. That's, and then I guess, yeah, I guess I just didn't. Didn't pick it back up, but I guess I know what I'm doing tonight. Another shirt set. Another one. Um, All right. We got... But, and when we talk about fate, we've been doing this for about 18 months now. Everywhere we go, everything we've done, I mean, we'll have a plan where we're going to go, whether it's from A to B, but everywhere between there, we've had people DM us as they, they go, I, we just rode by you guys on the, on the road, <laughs> and you should check out this. And we usually do. Yeah. And we've met friends. We have, we have friends and people in so many different places. And it's all from just meeting. And this guy DMs us, hey, you guys should go down to Tortilla Flat. We go, this is just an example. Yeah. And it happens all the time. We go down to Tortilla Flat. And we're sitting in there. We need Wi-Fi. We're going to go live. But we didn't, weren't able to do it. But we, there's a guy at the bar. And we talk to him. And he comes and sit with, sits with us. He's the owner. Of the yeah. of Tortilla of Flat. Tortilla no Flat. way. The town. He owns a Supercross team. So he's talking about his racers, and he knows people we know. Next thing you know is, hey, why don't you go, guys go down to the Union with us in Arizona. Chandler, Arizona? Uh, uh, Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert. Gilbert. We're, so we go down there with him, and we're eating dinner. It's his restaurant. And he does bike nights. You know, so it's like, so he's a friend now, but we've over. Sorry for the connection, guys. Is the connection gone? Yeah, we actually we had some pretty bad issues in the beginning, first couple minutes, and then right now they can still hear us loud and clear, which is great. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, there's just been a little connection. What's up, Laura? Hi. Um, but yeah, they should still be able to hear us. So while we're at it, shout out to Robert Razzo from L.A. who got himself a See You Down the Road shirt. Nice, nice. Um, I'm just going to give it a sec, but you guys can keep talking and see so if I can figure this see, out. It, it, is it because the video kicked in? I think it has something to do with the couple hundred feet of wires and cables that we installed yesterday. <laughs> um, getting a little error here, but it's still, hopefully still streaming. Gas, gas can see Razos FXD Super Glide says, hey Josh, can you guys not ship it? I'll pick up the shirt. Yeah, what? Uh, oh, that's Robert Razos. Yeah, that's okay, Robert. you got it. Um, yep. it'll it'll pick back up in a minute. Maybe it's because we're all using the Wi-Fi. That could be it. I'm gonna it turn. Be. We're on. But it just happened when we started opening up all our phones. Aha. Uh -huh. So what were you saying now? The no, I mean you guys are. It's so effective because you're in alignment. You're doing what your heart really wants to do, right? You think about this. You speak about this. You act on it, and you're literally riding into people's lives and sharing that process. So that's why you're so magnetic. Yeah, that definitely is 100%. Right? Well, there's like definitely a leap of faith. I mean, I got out of the banking industry. He still got his company. We would come back for, you know, three or four years worth of stories to our families. We'd come back and tell them the people we met, what we saw. And they're like, you've got to capture that some way. And so they were kind of the, the folks that really pushed us to do it. And then it was like this, well... Let's go take two iPhones, and <laughs> he had a little stand for his yeah. phone, a little tripod, and we went up to uh, what's the what's the Nevada Carson City? Car no, no. What was the first drop? Virginia City. No, Virginia. no, no. Oh, Death was, Valley, no, baby, no. Reno. The first oh, trip, no. first trip Mount we Charleston. ever did. Oh, it's okay. outside of Las Vegas. Off. But that's through yeah. Death Valley. So you know, and we put the little tripod up and drive by it on our bikes you know <laughs> that, that was our cool. that was yeah. our yeah. <laughs> but it was this whole leap of faith and then it you know it's it we build a website and we're like we're just going to put parts on it that we run because we know and we can talk knowledgeably about them we we put tons of miles on them mm -hmm. and it's morphed into this bigger site you know the the channel has morphed we thought maybe in a year we'd get five or six thousand we told people ten mm -hmm. you know we're here at twenty two thousand twenty one thousand almost um instagram it's just been this constant like positive energy around we've fought a few times no big deal but everything we've done has had this positive energy around it and it just landed in the right spot at the right time 
and it's just it's been an amazing we're going to write a book about it one day but i'll say the, sure we will I'll, I'll say the one cool thing we should have a coffee table book but yeah, i'll say the should. one cool thing when he says we fought a few times the good <laughs> thing about those fights they were always about a creative moving forward what do we let's do this it's, it was uh, that kind of fight it was like what if we do that? Well, it wasn't a deal that. breaker, right? It was like we're we're pushing no, forward. We, we've yeah. had a cusp, we've had a couple of people ask if we've had any, and we have occasionally. We're friends. It's any relationship. <laughs> it's always his fault, but you know, I'm we're nice also guys, we're yeah. also guys. <laughs> so we get once we hug and it's over. Yeah, like we don't. It's gone. But to go back, so we're these two guys that are riding around, and we all of a sudden. How we're not gonna? How are we gonna edit? Right. We don't know how to. We're not gonna do this. That same moment, ten minutes later, we're over at Thrashing. We asked Rob, the shipping guy, "Do you know anyone that edits?" Yeah, I got this guy right here. Let me text him. <laughs> Five ten minutes later. Hey, how's it going? I'm Lance from Galen from Two Lane Life. Oh yeah, Josh. Uh, we're looking for an editor. I'll be there tomorrow. Okay. He comes over the next day. He's been with us ever since. You see? And he's riding a motorcycle. Yeah. And you guys so like, keep emphasizing Whoa. fate. Right. You're the in alignment. Time. You're in alignment. This is fate. Yep, yep. We're going to start changing. It. Well, let's change it to two-lane fate. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we won't have our two-lane socks with the badge. Yes. Ooh. Oh, snap. We're going to you have to get some of these. Look at all this gear. Oh, yeah. The next step up is underwear. Well, yeah. Lance, you can, you can finally write that book. With the, the special yeah. type of, uh, you know, uh, material for swass. There. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. See, we can collab. These are on things that, that you got to have when you're riders. Yeah, absolutely. They're yeah. important. So, how long have we been going? You want to take a guess? An hour and a half. You are six minutes, 31, two, three seconds off. Cool. <laughs> Good times. You know. <laughs> and we got the one and only. There might be more. Justin Harris in the house. Yo, yo, yo Justin, what's that's happening? My son. Um, yeah, we're looking good. We, whoa, I'm, and that's Laura, my wife. We uh, oh, had some connection you. issues, but you. everyone's hanging with us, and I'll now we're back. back to it. Okay, cool. All good. So we missed some of the stuff. Uh, usually the audio Choppy. still works pretty well. Sometimes the video will cut out audio. It should be decent, but hey, I'm recording this too. So eventually, when we get around I to. If uh, it's out because it happened as soon as you played the clip the first time. Um, I don't maybe know. It's, maybe we got a little. There, I think there. there's some streaming settings because I'm using multiple programs to get it from the camera to YouTube. Right. There was some bit rate issues. I'm just kind of <clears throat> right over my head, but I'll figure it out. I always do. <laughs> so outside of your daughter. Yeah. Defining proud moment. Is it? Is there one, or is there like just so many because of this journey you've traveled? Mm. Proud moment, man. There's so many. There really are. I mean, it's hard to. I mean, my daughter is the crescendo. Right. So now everything else is just underneath that. They're just moments of um, a pride for sure. Of um, you know, a sense of satisfaction. I think looking back, I'm happy with my effort. Right. Overall. I know that I haven't left any stones unturned. There's no regret. That's a great thing. Yeah. That's so, good to be able to say that. Yeah, yeah wholeheartedly. I like mean, that's, completely that's a relief. That's it is, a, yeah. Yep. I say it with every fiber. Yeah. I mean, and just speaking myself, I can relate to a lot of the things that you're saying, and that's why I was attracted to watch Phil Smagical. Yeah. Because I'd be looking at his Instagram going, the guy is like, messed up and he is just smiling every day and he's like showing you his recovery every day and I watched it for like a year and I'm like and he'd always say Laura come watch this you gotta see this, yeah. see this guy. You, you know he's shoot he, he's a lot more positive and optimistic I think than I was in that phase of life uh, he's a little bit older have you talked to him uh, no I haven't talked to him one on one but I've talked to him through Travis and through other you know uh, uh, connections um, but I too followed him um, but I'll tell you honestly you know it's I was not the happy-go-lucky guy all the time I had this experience of that that made me incredibly grateful and um, instilled a real reverence for life 
but I also suffered and was depressed and I wanted to end my life on multiple occasions. And, you know, the contrast, the swing in life is dramatic and I feel that. I still feel it. You know, I have to, I get to wake up and I'm grateful for that. I keep that in my mind, but I have to, you know, at times when it's really difficult, you know, kick my own ass, so right. to speak. I have to use the, the frustration or the anger as some kind of fuel, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to get me to move, literally. Right. You know, psychologically, I can become more paralyzed than the right. body itself. Um, so this is a, a practice. This is an exercise. You know, mental positivity is something that you have to choose. Especially when you're living in a lot of pain or you have a lot of responsibility or a lot of fear. You know, you're not just going to wake up and bound up and be like, I'm excited to face the lion. Right. Every day. Every day. Right. So that's where um, I find a lot of purpose and passion in trying to share my suffering, listen to yours. Together we'll hold each other's hands and we'll go forward. Yeah. We'll ride together. We'll talk together. We'll, we'll cry and laugh together and we'll toast to another great day. Right. But, you know, these are... This is a process. Yeah. And that's where we find progress. Right. Wow. Well, we're incredibly grateful to have you joined our lives. Uh, not our show. Me too. Yeah. Right? I mean, and, and it's just, you know, it, we often say it, motorcycles have brought us into this community and the people we meet, just incredible. And your story, and now that you're a father and you get to experience <laughs> all this stuff, it's going to be awesome to watch. Full spectrum. Yeah. Life's a salad bar, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joe Dirt. Yeah. Dig it. <laughs> so, what's his uh, his website and his Instagram? Yes, yeah, so we got his Instagram, his uh, website, his everything you need to know about him in the description of this video. All that good stuff. So oh, it's I am Aaron Baker. I'm, dot com. I'm, Aaron, I'm Baker. Aaron Baker. Yep, no apostrophe. Like Johnny Cash. And what are we doing with the shirts? Every shirt we sell this month? Yep. Is yep. it just this shirt or all our shirts? What do you want to do? Why don't we just do it on all our shirts? Let's do it on all the shirts. All right, scratch, you with that? Yeah. scratch the question yeah. I asked earlier. These just guys. buy some shirts. Any shirts? Any shirt you want. we will make it worth oh, wow. everyone's while. Uh, Not could you stand up and show them again? Because I think this it was streaming. So that's the black. See all down the road. Yep. Little compass, hand uh, hand drawn by LC himself. Just gonna say there was a lot of collaboration on this. We had Jake uh, from Thrashing. We had Lance. Well, what happens uh, is one of us great. one of us comes up with an idea, and then we all get together and like. I'll say something, and Galen will say something, and Josh will say, and then pretty soon we kind of like morph all this stuff together, and boom, we have a shirt. So on the back of that shirt, the N actually lines up with the north on the compass. So it's See, a little those details. I mean, little, yeah. little details, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, we're super excited to do that. And Thank what's you the foundation? Well. Uh, if you want to support spinal cord injury, it is wingsforlife.com yep. or wingsforlifeholidayauction.com. And that is through Red Bull That's as well, through Red right? Bull. That's their charity of choice that funds world-class scientific research. If you want to affect locally right here, right now, please go to artistsfortrauma.org and enhance the quality of someone's life by providing an artistic medium for them to express themselves and transcend their suffering. So we're like going to take the five dollars from the shirts. We're going to funnel it through wherever you say. Let's, let's go. go. Our, let's yeah. holiday auction if you want. You can you can have an unobtainium unobtainium type experience with a Red Bull athlete with myself, uh, or please artist for trauma. That's where we want to put it. Artist for right trauma. Right here, right yep. now. Thank you guys. It's awesome. Um, anything you want to say to your daughter or your wife because this is going to be memorialized forever oh man i don't want to make you cry but no. <laughs> well, you know I'm, yeah i have a i mean my emotions are on a hair trigger now with my daughter yeah I for mean, sure just the thought can how old is she she'll be a year on the 26th yeah 26th this month uh -huh. yeah. 
And I know, yeah. you, I know you've done it, but always smell her neck when they're so young. They have the best <laughs> smell ever. Oh, they do. It's intoxicating. <laughs> yeah. I miss her now. Yeah. Um, anyhow, yeah. Um, what was I? What was I saying? I got lost in. You Kayla. were going to talk. Her hello. name is Kayla. Kayla May. I love you, sweetheart. My wife, Katie. She is uh, the best life partner I could have ever uh, imagined. Um, thank you, honey, for being my ride or die. <laughs> so, and, Katie. Uh, Katie. Ka and uh, Kayla. Yep. Yeah. And Kayla is an amalgamation of my mother and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law's name is Carol. Mm -hmm. My mother's name is Laquita. So Kayla. Kayla. Got it. May, M-A-E, is the month I was injured, May 26th. The 26th was the date that Katie and I met. No way. And we were married on the 26th, and we had Kayla on the 26th. Wow. No wow. way. So Talk if I put fate. numbers on that Harley out there on that fuel cell, it would probably wow. be 26. Whoa. I like hey, that. I'll paint them on there for you. All right. So Good man. Yeah. <laughs> But we're gonna we gotta work on a new one as well. You gotta have your bar hopper and your traveler. Hey. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And do, we can't forget Toots. Toots. She'll ride with us. You rock, Toots. She'll be ready to ride. Her boot comes off in two weeks. <laughs> she wanted to be here tonight, but. Uh, yeah. What's up? She's getting ready. Yeah. We, we had a chair we for you and everything. Over here. Yep. She and Hans, we put a lot of miles together. So my name is two grandfathers, Gail and Lynn. And I have his first name. I gave it to my son, so he'll carry it forward as the uh, legacy. But he only has it in his middle name. I don't want him to go through what I went through. <laughs> <laughs> Boy named Sue. And back in the back in the day, you know, there were words that were. But I I was big enough Wait, to take care so of it. So Justin's middle name is Galen. Is it? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. After 38 years, I didn't know that. Well, now you know. Well, I wouldn't have known it 38 years. Uh, how old is he again? He's so 20. that would be his great-grandfather's. Yeah, he's 26. A legacy gotcha. name. Yeah. I like it. Interesting. Well, what a great day. What a great day. Thank you guys so much. I what, think what fate happened here. You guys will see some really great stuff. But go check out our drop that we had uh, yesterday and look forward to next week's. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell your friends, too, because we're going to have... This next year is going to be really inspiring because I'm feeling some energy that you guys would like to see. And Aaron's YouTube channel in the description. Uh -huh. uh, just, Aaron's you know, just subscribe. Yes, just do what you got to do. Yeah, yes. for sure. Uh, make a comment, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up. All that helps. We appreciate all your support. And uh, Aaron, we close these things out by saying we'll see you down the road. You just we join us with that? I'd love to. But one more thing, remember, every shirt you buy, $5 will go to the foundation. Big ones, buckaroonies, smackaroonies. So, and I'll have so, some more to share the next time we, we talk to everybody. I'm inking a deal on my book. Oh, nice. That'll be coming out the first quarter. Nice. nice. So we can put it right here on the That's camera. right. We'll Sign. share that. Yes. We need it signed. We'll share that. We'll share some trainings that are going to accompany that, some mindset trainings. Because that's where we want to go is into the mind. Nice. Uh, there's a blog that you can follow. So I'm, I'm okay. constantly writing and sharing. So I look forward to saddling up and down the road with you guys. So we just go like this and say, see you down the road. Are you ready? So 